Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. March is almost over, you guys, which means somehow we are 25% of the way through 2022 already. The mind boggles, and while March brought with it many things, madness, ides, and some of the best GPU prices we've seen since the shortage began, it leaves us with an unsettling feeling of anticipation and confusion, which is either because that green beer we partook of was maybe a bit too green, or simply because we've been promised so many diverse and wonderful new products from the tech manufacturers out there that it got a bit dizzying. But fear not, tariffs are lifting, new GPUs are in the works from Nvidia, Intel, and AMD, and even power supplies are getting an upgrade to handle the next generation of PC hardware. It's time for the tech news. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the new Lightwings fans from Be Quiet, which combine legendary near silent operation with optimal performance and of course, RGB lighting. Control the look of your PC with up to 20 addressable LEDs per fan and choose from standard PWM for airflow or PWM high speed for use with radiators and heat sinks. They're available in 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter sizes and suitable for any build in need of a functional and tasteful RGB upgrade. So for more on the new Lightwings fans from Be Quiet, click the sponsor link in the video description. Right out of the gate, we begin with more good news potentially for potential GPU buyers in the US. The Biden administration has reinstated 352 exclusions to the Trump administration's import tariffs on shipments from China, meaning the 25% duty that importers had to pay to get goods into the country, which was definitely never just passed along to consumers, is going away for the rest of 2022. The list of exclusions was made public Thursday and includes graphics processing modules and printed circuit assemblies constituting unfinished logic boards, which would cover both graphics cards and motherboards. Desktop PC cases and trackpads costing over $100 will also be tariff free now, but power supplies over 500 watts did not make the cut. The move is retroactive dating back to October 12th, 2021 as well, which could be why we've seen some significant GPU price drops in just the past week. Some of these products were temporarily exempted from tariffs under the previous administration, but those expired on December 31st, 2020. Speaking of 25% duty, some felt that Nvidia's GT TC keynote was composed of at least a quarter excrement, if not closer to half or even 75%, but that all depends on how substantial you feel the AI part of the presentation was. I thought some parts of it were interesting, like all the little AI knights who were learning natural actions and movements by running around and getting AI training, or Maxine, the video conferencing kit that can do things like reposition your eyes in real time so people think you're looking at the camera instead of looking down to read your notes, or just change your voice and mouse movements so you speak a different language all of a sudden, like you learned it in the Matrix. ¿Cómo puedes superar las barreras del lenguaje con Maxine? Wow, I don't speak Spanish. With Maxine's help, now I can. Ahora puedo hablar tu idioma con mi propia voz. Impresionante, ¿no? Magnifico. None of this AI stuff is scary in the least, as long as you assume that Nvidia is a fundamentally good company with no machinations on world domination, who will always protect regular people by making sure their machine learning technology is never used for evil purposes. Sounds good to me. Let's move on to the hardware. And specifically for PC gamers, the interesting part was more information about Hopper, the code name for Nvidia's next gen GPU architecture. The first iteration of Hopper is the H100, a machine learning focused chip with 80 billion transistors built on TS. SMC's 4N node, which is not 4 nanometer, by the way. It's just a clever name for NVIDIA's special variant of TSMC's 5 nanometer node with a 4 instead of a 5, kind of like how Intel renamed their 10 nanometer process to Intel 7, which fooled everybody. It looks to be a beast of a chip, though, with six HBM3 memory stacks adjacent to the hopper die and 40 terabits per second of I.O. bandwidth. Raw performance, according to NVIDIA, is three to six times that of the Ampere-based A100, which could mean some serious gen on gen uplift for the hopper based series of Nvidia consumer graphics cards. Speaking of which, the next generation of Nvidia GPUs is likely to be the 40 series since sequential numbers are easier to understand, but it won't be hopper based. It will be Ada based, named for mathematician Ada Lovelace, and they went with her first name because internet searches for Lovelace are often flagged by porn filters. Igor's lab posted some leaks on the supposed GeForce RTX 4090 and RTX 4080 on Friday though, which will be based on the ADA AD102 GPU 
new core and feature up to 600 watts total board power. That's a lot, but this news is reinforced by news of the upcoming RTX 3090 Ti launch, which I know nothing about, of course, except that those cards are rumored to have a 450 watt total board power by default and also use the new 12 pin PCI Express graphics power connector, which has also been leaked this week in pictures and a three eight pin to one 12 pin adapter that will likely ship with 3090 Ti's so people can use them with existing power supplies. Igor says the 3090 Ti is a test run for the next gen 40 series cards though, to see how the market handles all these new developments. The Ampere based GA102 GPU that the 3090 Ti uses might even be pin compatible with the ADA AD102 GPU for the 40 series, allowing Nvidia and board partners to carry over design work from the 3090 Ti to cards like the RTX 4080 and RTX 4090. But how much will they cost is likely what many of you want to know about the 40 series cards, but if if this story is any indication, I would not get my hopes up for bargain bin pricing. On Tuesday, the same day that Nvidia was distracting us all with that cute tiny Jensen AI avatar again, hi TJ, they held an investor meeting where they showed off this slide. Guess what, Nvidia investors, gamers who upgraded from a previous gen desktop graphics card to a GeForce RTX 3000 series graphics card, spent a lot more money this time around about $300 on average, and that's based on MSRP pricing, not street prices. None of us are surprised about this at all, of course, but NVIDIA Senior Vice President of PCs, Jeff Fisher, probably had to explain to the investors on the call that $300 is a significant amount of money for most people, and not simply the ballpark price of a banana. After that, I also assume that he steepled his fingers while he and the other wealthy attendees did that slow building evil laugh thing. I will, I will attempt, I will attempt. <laughs> okay. It'd probably help to have some underlighting show up towards the end like with Mr. Burns, but anyway, further evidence that new GPUs are forthcoming was revealed on Friday, with Tech Power Up's popular GPU Z software getting an update. The change log for version 2.45.0 lists added support for discrete GPUs from three different vendors. No, not three new GPUs, GPUs from three vendors, as in NVIDIA, AMD, and at last, Intel. And we're not just talking about iGPUs. For Team Blue, they're still maintaining secrecy as it only lists preliminary support for Intel Arc Alchemists with no model numbers or anything. For Nvidia, there's the new RTX 3090 Ti, of course, as well as a handful of new variants of existing gaming and mining GPUs. And for AMD, there's the Radeon RX 6 blank 50 series, as in the 6950 XT and the 6750 XT, as well as some mobile GPUs and support for the RDNA 2 based APU in the Steam Deck. There's also an AMD W6400 GPU in these GPU-Z listings, but while that's a Radeon Pro card, there does appear to be a consumer RX6400 on the way too. This was revealed by a gigabyte filing with the South Korean National Radio Research Agency, which is a new one, I'll admit, when it comes to sources for GPU leaks, but that said, since an OEM-only RX6400 already exists, this isn't exactly huge news, but it could be another low-cost alternative for a system that's just in need of video outs. With 25% fewer cores than the already shat upon RX 6500 XT though, it probably won't break any frame rate records and may simply become the new low-end card in the 6000 series for people to universally hate. Speaking of universal hatred, if there's one thing we all loathe and detest, it's wasted time, which is why tech briefs are all about efficiency. On Tuesday, an early Geekbench score leaked for the upcoming AMD Ryzen 5800X 3D CPU, and here it is. The 3D vCache enabled chip hit a multi-core score of 11,250, which is about 9% faster than a 5800X, although the single core score is about the same because it's not a cache dependent test. The 5800X 3D launches on 420, hey, 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 smoke, smoke weed, weed every, every day. day. Speaking of events that should be made into a national holiday, on Wednesday, Intel announced a groundbreaking spec update for PC power supplies. ATX 3.0, which includes the addition of this new 12 pin connector for graphics cards called 12VH Power. 
It's in all caps, so you have to say it that way. Capable of 600 watts of power delivery. 12 VH power. Shrinks the pin pitch from three millimeters to 4.2 for a smaller connector size. And yes, it's the same power connector that many NVIDIA 30 series Founders Edition cards use, except newer cards like the 3090 Ti and likely 40 series will use the full connector, which piggybacks four additional data pins on top of the existing 12. That allows for up to 600 watts of power delivery, but you should know that the version on the 30 series cards without those data pins or that triple eight pin to single 12 pin adapter that will probably ship with a lot of 3090 Ti's is limited to 450 watts. Intel says the 12 VH power connection will be the standard for most, if not all, PCIe 5.0 graphics cards. And that would apparently include this MSI GeForce RTX 3090 Ti Supreme X, whose pictures were leaked by the notorious troublemakers at videocards.com. It's a massive card with a triple fan, three and a half slot cooler, and a 480 watt TDP. That can still be handled with those triple eight pin, 450 watt power supply adapters though, since the card can also draw 75 watts from the PCI Express bus. But yeah, that is a beefy card. I mean, just, just look how thick it is, just like your mom. Intel might be a little worried about AMD's 5800X 3D taking the best CPU for gaming crown from their 12900K because they almost definitely have a new and slightly faster 12900KS ready to launch. Newegg listed the KS version on Friday, and while it has since been unlisted, the new processor reportedly hits 5.5 gigahertz turbo instead of the pitiful 5.3 gigahertz that the stupid K version can muster, and it had an $800 price tag, about a $185 premium since the 12900K lists for $615 right now. Time will tell if customers will be interested given the big price increase, or if the 12900KS will be able to keep up with the 5800X 3D, which will also notably cost far less money at $450. The shady and notorious hacking crew Lapsus, who recently gained infamy and notoriety by targeting tech giants including Nvidia, Samsung, Okta, and Microsoft, was dealt a blow on Thursday when one of their leaders was arrested by London police. The criminal mastermind, who had amassed a $14 million fortune through their poning prowess and was originally thought to be located in South America, was not named, as they ended up being a 16-year-old living with their mother in Oxford, UK. And while this development lends unexpected credence to countless flimsy television show plot lines with hacker antagonists who turned out to be high schoolers, updates said six more people between the ages of 16 and 21 were arrested in connection with the investigation. So some of them were college aged at least. I think hackers are very cool though, just putting that out there. Because sometimes they do cool stuff, like leaking two years worth of Apex Legends updates, pissing off EA and revealing multiple new maps, weapons, cosmetics, and nine new legends, including one named Newcastle, who seems close to completion. A Google Doc filled with the info can be found on the Apex Uncovered subreddit, where I know editor Joe won't be going because he doesn't want to get sucked back into Apex again. But consider this, the new Battle Royale map is called Divided Moon, which kind of sounds like you're spreading your butt cheeks. Speaking of assuming the position, Rockstar would apparently like all of their GTA 5 online players to do just that, or at least those who are lucky enough to be playing on PS5 or Xbox Series X or S. GTA Plus is what they're calling it, allowing you to pay six bucks a month for a game that launched in 2013 that you probably already paid $60 for at least twice because it's launched on like 18 different consoles now. I hope this goes without saying, guys, but please don't sign up for this. Don't give Rockstar any more money unless it's for GTA 6. And finally, we pay our respects to Stephen Wilhite, the creator of The GIF, who died last week from COVID at the age of 74. Wilhite invented GIFs in the late 80s as a way to distribute high quality, high resolution graphics in color over the abysmally slow internet speeds of the time, but GIFs became legendary as a vehicle for clever memes and delightfully short animated GIF videos. Of course, they have also spawned conflicts innumerable over the proper pronunciation. Is it GIF? or GIF, but while the Oxford Dictionary says both are okay, Wilhite says it's unquestionably GIF with a soft J. But his favorite GIF was also the creepy dancing baby, so maybe he shouldn't be making that call. And if you wanna know what I think, uh, hopefully it's obvious. Rest in peace, Steven, and thanks for helping make the internet what it is today. But there you have it guys, tech news for the week, and if you liked it, click that like button and let me know. Your feedback is always welcome too, so please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today 
are linked in the video's description if you're interested. And you can check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribe if you wanna be cool too. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.